the very close bonds and linkages uh, between us. Now, only a very short time later, you have another Royal Marines governor. Um, it is sometimes said you can have too much of a good thing. <laughs> I, I hope that's not true in this case. Uh, and may I thank both the Chief Minister and the Leader of the Opposition for the, uh, for the welcome uh, for myself and Liz. Uh, like many Royal Marines, I've visited, or in fact, to be strictly accurate, I have passed through Gibraltar on a number of occasions in the 37 years I spent in uniform. But I never really stayed long enough uh, to get to know the city. As the first port of call for almost every ship that was leaving or returning to the United Kingdom, there was something of a standard routine. Uh, the ship would dock in the early afternoon. There would then be some sort of quite smart cocktail party on the flight deck in the summer, in the hangar in the evening, uh, around, uh, in, in the winter, uh, around dusk. Uh, and then the evening, and I have to say for some, much of the night, would be spent enjoying the hospitality of this town. And that sometimes even involved the consumption of beer. <laughs> the following morning, the price for that was, of course, paid in the rock run. Uh, then around lunchtime, the ship would sail. So although we were all uh, on these visits uh, peripherally aware of the enormous and strategic importance uh, of Gibraltar, uh, most remembered it more for its welcoming hospitality. Now, of course, over the years, and especially since being selected for this appointment, I have deepened that knowledge considerably. But I still have a way to go, uh, and I know you will all help me out with that. It is an extraordinary privilege for anyone, uh, but especially for a Royal Marine, to be appointed as Governor and Commander-in-Chief. Our existences have more or less coincided over time, um, and many events have been shared. And the timing at this moment could not be better. Next year is the 350th anniversary of the formation in 1664 of the Admiral's Regiment, uh, the organization that later became the Royal Marines. And of course, the 310th anniversary of the capture of Gibraltar uh, by British and Dutch Marines in 1704. Gibraltar is the only battle honor that we wear on our colors and crest. It's on the cap badge of every Marine. Um, it was one of my companies when I was commanding 40 Commando in 1996 that represented the Corps when you granted us the freedom of the city of Gibraltar. Eight years before you granted it to the Royal Navy. And I always enjoy reminding my dark blue <laughs> naval colleagues of that. Uh, that very special and enduring uh, relationship is hugely important to the Royal Marines, uh, and I think also to Gibraltar and her people. Now, as you have both said, I arrive here at a difficult time when the number, the scale, and the character of the incursions into British Gibraltar territorial waters is significantly up, and when the delays to cross the border are unacceptably long indeed mounting, uh, amounting to harassment. A situation made worse by the illogicality and random nature of their imposition. These are situations that simply should not exist between two friendly nations that belong to the same political and economic organization, the EU, and to the same military organization, NATO. But of course, Gibraltar has experienced these things before. Indeed, much worse, I think, at various times in our history. Several sieges, and of course, with the distinction of being the only remaining territory on the continent of Europe that remained in Allied hands in World War II. So we all know that these things only serve to strengthen the resolve and determination of both the people and the governments. And I say governments plural because, as you have confirmed, uh, in my reading of the history, I don't think there has ever been a period 
when the support of the British government has been stronger or so openly expressed. It's now repeated so often that at first I did wonder if it was really necessary uh, for me to again repeat the assurances on sovereignty. But I think as the new governor, uh, I should do so. The Constitution is very clear. Her Majesty's government will never enter into arrangements under which the people of Gibraltar would pass under the sovereignty of another state against their freely and democratically expressed wishes. And furthermore, Britain has also declared, and publicly and repeatedly, that it would never even enter a process of negotiation with Spain about the sovereignty of the rock without Gibraltar's permission. So whatever may have happened in the past, and even in the quite recent past, there can be no doubt or fear by any of us that that commitment would or could be breached. So the sovereignty case is rock solid. It's indisputable, it's non-negotiable, and it applies just as strongly to the territorial waters. We occupy the moral high ground on this issue, and also on the issue of decolonization. Whatever arguments may continue to occur over the fine detail of the decolonization case uh, within the context of the United Nations, no reasonable person could claim that Gibraltar is a colony of the UK. I've often found it in many situations that it helps to apply the common sense test, step back from the legal and administrative minutiae, and apply common sense. Nobody applying that test could say that the UK has not taken full account of the wishes of the people of Gibraltar. Self-determination certainly rules here. So, despite all the irritations and inconveniences, we are 100% sure of the rightness of our position. And Britain and Gibraltar are in lockstep on this. And equally good news is, of course, the strength of the economic situation here. Uh, in a business-friendly environment with, as we have heard and better described by the Chief Minister, with all the advantages of the EU membership and full compliance. Uh, I mentioned earlier my various short visits, but I did in fact spend a longer period here in the early 90s uh, on a Joint Force Command Post exercise, and again in 2004 uh, as the Commandant General of the Royal Marines at the 300th anniversary events. This city has made remarkable strides, certainly very noticeable since my first longer visit in the early 1990s. Of course, we can never be complacent. Um, none of the pillars of this economy, or indeed any economy, are immune to reverses. And of course, the potential effects of reverses are magnified in a small economy. But I know there are clever, well-qualified, and experienced people who are managing this and looking for further diversification opportunities and looking to the medium and long term to ensure that the current very favorable economic situation is indeed sustainable. Now, I referred earlier to the relationship between two European countries. In fact, there are three entities in this relationship, though. Um, and it's self-evident, but nonetheless important to reiterate, and you have both done it, that there is no value for anyone, least of all Gibraltar, in a poor relationship between Britain and Spain or between Gibraltar and Spain. Good neighborly relations between the three of us are truly a win-win, indeed a win-win-win situation. Um, against the background that I've described of the very rock-solid relationship with Britain and the shared belief in the certainty of our case, we can, indeed we must, talk to Spain about the many local issues that are reducing the quality of life, not only for Gibraltarians, but even more so in some ways for the Spaniards who live just across the border. Talking is crucial, uh, and I hope that the ad hoc talks can start soon. 
not least as a demonstration of goodwill and a shared desire to progress. Of course, you have both emphasized, we are absolutely ready to talk, but there has to be somebody to talk to. Um, most of my working life, 37 years, uh, was spent in uniform. And most of the last 10 of that period uh, was involved with operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, uh, so as well as that very valuable experience, I've spent the last three and a half years working in a completely different area for the US construction and engineering firm Bechtel. And for the last two and a half years, I've been heading up their project in Gabon in West Africa, where we established an agency to coordinate much needed uh, infrastructure development. Now, obviously, Gibraltar is nothing like Gabon, but I do believe that the commercial experience uh, that I gained there can assist me in better understanding how Gibraltar operates. Liz and I are looking forward to getting to know all Gibraltarians uh, and to be further educated on every aspect of life here. Even if things don't concern me in my constitutional position, they most certainly interest me and I will be keen to hear all about them. I have met uh, over the past 10 weeks and conversed at length with six former governors, Chapel, Luce, Dury, Richards, Fulton, and of course, my immediate predecessor. All different characters from different backgrounds, but with one thing at least in common. Uh, they all fell in love with Gibraltar and her people, and all still have many local connections. And I just know it's going to be the same for Liz and I. Uh, and we both hugely look forward to it. And now I'm delighted to be able to conclude with a message from Her Majesty the Queen, who has asked me to convey her support for the people of Gibraltar and her continuing best wishes. <laughs> 